the basic units of us, our genes, make up less than 2% of our entire DNA. All the rest, scientists nickname junk DNA, apparently useless genetic clutter left over from billions of years of evolution. This new study finds that junk is anything but. 80% of it is crucial. It comprises millions of chemical switches, and they control the genes that make us who we are. If simple water molecules that form ice crystals exhibit magnificent structure, consider the design ingenuity behind large, complex molecules, such as DNA. DNA contains the blueprint for all life and is by far the densest information storage mechanism known in the universe. For example, the amount of information contained in a pinhead volume of DNA would fill a stack of books 500 times higher than from here to the moon. The program code and design of such an incredible system indicates a supremely intelligent designer. The evidence to me that just cries out that there's a God is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful, massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. And scientists know today that language as a code only come from an intelligence, and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out. In the beginning, God created the universe. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it, thousands of different kinds, and each one of them is so complex, nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works, and encoded is the, the instruction manual. It's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of 100 trillion cells. Furthermore, DNA is a three-dimensional molecule that is self-replicating. Each molecule is able to make an identical copy quickly and efficiently. The Lord has even programmed DNA to detect and correct replication errors. These sophisticated capabilities far exceed man's means. God has created the DNA molecule in such a way that it is self-correcting. There are special proteins called enzymes that go up and down the DNA molecule looking for and making repairs on a minute-by-minute, second-by-second basis. God created us with a DNA code that actually has what we call editase or editorial type enzymes. Just as an editor reads a newspaper or a book looking for mistakes, so God has created special enzymes enzymes that go up and down our DNA molecule repairing the mistakes in ways that are unbelievably complex. Our DNA has information in it and there is a whole field of scientific study called information science which studies how information originates, how it's transmitted and so on. Intelligent programmers write computer software, but what about living things? Evolutionists tell us that the information in the first living cell just appeared by itself with no intelligent input required. But is that possible? The answer is a resounding no. Even one of Australia's best known scientists, Paul Davies, conceded that there is no known law of physics able to create information from nothing. And perhaps that's why in a New Scientist article, he lamented, how did stupid atoms spontaneously write their own software. Nobody knows. If you look at an effect um, and you want to explain it, you want to explain it using the historical scientific method by reference to a cause that is known to produce that effect. 
the effect in question. So when we're looking at the origin of life, uh, many biologists, biochemists, origin of life researchers in particular say the central thing that we need to explain is the origin of the information that makes life tick, that makes it run. What runs the show in biology is information. Much of it encoded digitally in the DNA molecule. We're also learning that there's other forms of information organized hierarchically in other parts of the genome and even beyond the genome. But it, it, it's very, I used to ask my students, you know, if you want to give your computer uh, a new functionality, a new function, uh, what do you have to give it? And of course they knew, code, you have to give it information. And it, the same thing is true in life. If you want uh, to produce life in the first place, if you want to develop a new form of life from a pre-existing form of life, you have to provide information. And so the question is, where does that information come from? And uh, original life researchers are, in particular, acutely aware of this problem. Since 1953, when Watson and Crick elucidated the structure of DNA, and also showed in subsequent years that DNA functions like a digital code in a section of software, or even a section of alphabetic text, uh, that th once they established that, then that raised a question. How did that feature of life arise? If you're gonna explain the origin of life, you gotta ex explain its salient features. Its salient feature is arguably the presence of digital information in DNA. DNA encodes the proteins that do all the important jobs in the cell. So where did that information come from? Since the 1950s, origin of life biologists have realized the central thing they have to explain is, is the origin of information. Model after model has stumbled uh, or even come to a grinding halt, has failed to explain precisely that feature of life. And so as I got into the, the topic of the origin of life, I realized that was, that was really the central question. And as I was studying how scientists develop their theories to explain the origin of the first life, I, I realized that, that, uh, that what was needed was a causal explanation for, for that, that feature of life. And I began to think more about this dictum that, that Darwin and Lyell had that we should be explaining things by reference to presently known causes, presently acting causes, and I asked myself the question, what is the presently acting cause of digital code? What's the, what's the known cause of information generally? And what we know from uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning in the past, about the past, is that, is that information always comes from an intelligent source. Digital information, for sure, we know it comes from programmers. But information generally always comes from an intelligent source. So by using Darwin's rule of reasoning, I concluded that the best explanation for the origin of the information necessary to build the first life is actually intelligence. The constant superior design number of mathematics, 1.618. The Creator has always used the very same number in numerous events in the universe. In our heart pulses, the aspect ratio of DNA spiral, and the special design of the universe, which is named as dodecahedron, and the leaf array rules of plants, which is named as phyllotaxy, and the snowflakes crystals, and the spiral structure of numerous galaxies. The crater has used the same number, the number of golden mean, 1.618. It is observed that this ratio is applied to the pyramids of Egypt, like it was applied to various famous architectural works. Famous astronomer Kepler defines this number as a precious treasury. Stephen Markout was proved as a result of his 25 year long study that human faces and bodies designed pursuant to this ratio are accepted as beautiful by every single person in the world. If 
the aspect ratio of any form is 1.618, then this form is convenient to golden mean. Perfect design.